Okay, we going live, honey. Hey, y'all. What's going hey, on, people? What's going on, Chicky? Not much. Um, this is going to be an interesting topic. Um, I'm not sure which way it's going to go, but I think it'll be an interesting topic. You want to go ahead and introduce it? Yes. Um, the topic is women preferring toxic masculinity over no masculinity at all. And so let's break down what we would consider toxic masculinity. Now, for me, I think I think that's a good starting point. So for me, um, if I describe what I think is meant by toxic masculinity, I would say they're meaning like a dominant man, a man who is um, assertive, a man who does not mince his words. Um, a man who um, could be deemed as aggressive, somebody potentially um, powerful, but uh, one a, a person that likely can't be controlled easily or can't be um, isn't easy to conform. What do you think? Um, I would probably consider it what I toxic masculinity is probably what I would consider like um, maybe like a thug and. Mm. I would I would kind of think of like what they would call some, like somebody who's not afraid of anything will take whatever they want to whenever they feel like it. Um, there's no order. There's no um, method to the mad. It's just the person just kind of running around mad, like gonna do whatever they want whenever they want to. Like a person. Now that's that's just, interesting. Yeah. Because I didn't, um, I didn't initially think that they're defining a thug by it. But what I do believe is that the intent is for people to imagine a thug. So I think that if you think about like toxic masculinity and some of the topics that it's been attached to, it can be any black man, but the picture that the media and or feminists, because that's generally the type of people that I hear using that term, want yes. you to get is one of a thug. Yes. Yes. Uh, I, I, but I know everyday black men, professional black men who embody a lot of the same traits that are being attached to toxic masculinity. So that's, that's interesting. It really is. Um... Let's see. Sasha Malone says toxic shouldn't be used in the same sentence as masculinity. Just my opinion. Hmm. Sasha, in a certain sense, I can kind of agree with that um, because we do have to get back to just normal freaking masculinity. And I kind of feel like our men are being demasculized. Is that a word? Uh, ema emasculated. <laughs> that word. <laughs> <laughs> but we know what you meant. We know what you meant. Child was just make up words. No, we know what you meant. <laughs> You're, that's a good point, though. It's a shaming tactic is what it's become. It's a shaming tactic. They're shaming yeah. men for being masculine. That's really true. That's really, that's really true. Why, that's why I have a problem with it. And I, I, I agree with Sasha pretty much because I think that um, there is a um, one view of masculinity that mainstream society wants to accept, and it is not the black man. So I think that they're trying to get black men to conform. And I think that this is about effeminization and, and emasculation of black males. And I think that um, they want you to think that uh, an assertive, strong black man is toxic in a way. So black yeah. men are becoming the face of toxic masculinity. Yeah. Um, when they see a big black guy, uh, most people want to want us to be scared. And um, as opposed to a man being protective of us, you know, they make him out to be some scary figure. And it's kind of it's kind of messed up when you think about it. Mm -hmm. You know, the crazy part is that has always been the image that the media has tried to portray of black males for as long as we've been in this country. Um, however, the interesting thing is that I'm seeing more and more black women who are who seem to be buying it into this notion like i'm seeing more and more black women who seem to be falling for you know the agenda that they're pushing you know that that basically 
um, a lot of the behavior. And, not, and that's not to say that there aren't men who display toxic behaviors, but why can't we say that's a toxic man? Or why can't we identify those persons individually as opposed to labeling a certain display of masculinity as toxic like I, I mean somebody has to give me an example of what toxic masculinity is in order for me to get it maybe I'm missing something I would um now in my own personal opinion now if you have guys that are uh doing bad things to hurt the communities and stuff like that but the thing about it is we don't um a guy could be well dressed working for a fortune 500 company and be the most despicable man on earth. But just because he has on a suit and tie and he could be a white man, we won't take that as a person that's toxic or a person that's doing uh, bullshit to our communities. We tend to give these men um, accolades and stuff because they have money. Yep. And, and that's because toxicity doesn't have one look. You are absolutely right. Yeah, yeah. I, I've noticed that the the better dressed the man is and if he has a little swag to him the more credit we give him and that credit may not necessarily be due you know what i mean well maybe <laughs> concrete are you there okay well she's having some technical difficulties but um yeah i've kind of noticed that we'll have men and as long as a man is well dressed, we tend to give more credence to the man. Um, oh, let me give y'all a good story. So back in my Navy days, um, I was on a ship and I would say a lot of us had been sexually harassed on a ship. But just to go to it, there was a, a guy that I really didn't deem as a, an attractive guy. And then there was a, a guy that was kind of handsome. Right. And um one of them touched my butt, but immediately I actually thought it was the ugly guy who touched my butt and I punched him and <laughs> he was like, it wasn't me, but I didn't even believe him because I was like, this nice looking guy wouldn't do that. And I felt so stupid because the nice looking guy was like, yeah, it was me. And I felt so bad because, you know, I thought the ugly dude had touched my butt, but it wasn't him. You know, that brings up an interesting point. Is it, and, and, and the, oh, this is really interesting. So do you think that fine men, attractive men, athletes, um, you know, at, men with athletic builds can get away with displaying toxicity, whereas unattractive men or men with that are broke cannot? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, the more money a man has, the more shit he can get away with, in my opinion. And I actually think that like the prettier a woman is, the more shit she can get away with. And Ooh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you said a word and it made me think about something that we'll probably discuss in the future, but that's a good point. Yeah. Um, I noticed that, you know, okay. So like with the Me Too movement, let's say you have a girl and she comes out against a rapper or, um, a, a singer and not don't get me wrong because you do have a lot of women kind of making now i'm not going to say kind of making you have a lot of women i ain't gonna say a lot you have a percentage of women making false claims right but at one point we would generally believe what a woman would say but nowadays it's like the more stat status a man has it's like it's almost hard as hell to prove that he actually did something or they're finding all kinds of loopholes and society um tends to question the woman more when there are statistics that say there are a small percentage of women that lie versus the people that are telling the truth but that's probably another story and another animal i don't know if we want to touch that just yet but what do you think You know what it made me think about this situation with the game, the rapper, um, when yeah. he had that show on VH1 where he was dating or whatever, and one of the women sued in, for sexual assault. And it was one of the women who was kind of like all over him. And she didn't get chose. I think she stayed till close to the end. She was an attractive girl. But when the story initially came out, I was like, yeah, right. And I'm not thinking, yeah, right, because I think he's above 
assaulting her and it makes me kind of feel bad that I was so quick to say because I don't know the details and I don't know what was alleged but it, I didn't see that she filed a criminal complaint it was that she went after him civilly which is what made me question it that and the fact that she was like all over him like she was one of the women who was you know um very uh flirty with him and you know very touchy feely with him so that's what made me question it, the sincerity of her claim. And I, like I said, I don't know the details, but I also found it interesting that she immediately filed uh, a civil suit. I think I think it might have been against him and Viacom, which he just recently lost. But I think when I read um, when I looked read, read uh, up on it, uh, the initial judgment was issued to her because he missed the court date. I think he was like touring in Germany or something and he alleged that he missed the court or that he forgot about it, which clearly he just wasn't taking it serious enough. And I think they awarded her like $7 million. Yeah, you're right. It was $7 million. Um, I don't know, but I've heard uh, a couple things about the game, um, <laughs> including getting a teenage girl in another country pregnant. But that's another that story. Too. Yeah, that, yeah. yeah, I heard that too. But, you know, so I, um, like regarding the topic, I do think that attractive men or men who are well off can get away with more. They can display toxic behavior and, you know, them not not be called out for it. Um, you know, so I do think that, 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 that that's possible. So you made me think about that when you talked about the fact that you immediately thought that it was the unattractive guy, you know, who... Because I've seen fine men be like, watch this, you know, and they'll do some foul mess. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I've seen it happen. So why do you think women are attracted to uh, bad men? I think that um, I, I, what I think it is, is I think it's the display of bravado. I think that it's their confidence. It is their strength. It's the way in which they um, dominate a room. I think that it, it's um, more, I think that it could be their looks too, but I think that it's more of the personality that they are attracted to. You know what I mean? Like who doesn't want a sexy, confident man who is like a leader within his own right and who is assertive and you know what I mean? Like no woman wants a man that is not displaying masculinity or a pushover or a punk. Like that's not attractive to a woman. Like I think innately, we are not attracted to that. That's just like some weak mess. And, and it's the same with animals in the jungle. If you watch like the animal kingdom and things of that nature, like the um, female animal species and a lot of um, different mammals, they are attracted to the dominant animal. And we are too. Well, I kind of looked at it like I looked at it from two ways, right? And so I kind of figured that a lot of women a lot of women aren't generally checked. You know what I mean? Like, um, I've been in relationships where I've had men afraid to check me, you know? Um, and people say you're not supposed to play games, you're not supposed to do da 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 da, you're not supposed to test your mate. And you, you do these things, uh, maybe subconsciously, but you do them. And so you have men who won't say no to certain things, you have men who won't, um, like if you talk crazy to him, he won't tell you not to be disrespectful. And I kind of feel like uh, a certain type of toxic man will is not afraid to check a woman at the line. You know what I'm saying? Like That's if you got true. out of line, he'll check That's your true. ass. Yep. And then I thought about this. I thought that, you know, some women have, uh, have kind of been down in the dumps on themselves. So there's a certain type of man that they don't really feel like they deserve. And I kind of feel that's a good one. <laughs> I kind of feel like you know, the, I think the more toxic a man is, there's a certain type of control. Generally, the woman is probably smarter than the toxic man in a certain sense. It's just my opinion. My opinion. And when a man is toxic, and if he's that toxic, a lot of them seem to lack in certain areas when they're that type of toxic. So I feel like a woman doesn't feel like she deserves any better. And so when they get those type, they can be manipulated more so in a sense. I don't know. I was thinking Now, you that. know what? You hit on something. So I think that 
part of it, yes, some women do have self-esteem issues and it might be that she doesn't feel that she's deserving. So even though he may check her, she know that in the end, he may not have a lot of alternatives. Where is he going to go back to mama's basement? You know what I mean? Type of thing. So I think yes. that you are on to something with that. And I think that that may be the motivation for some women. So that's a good point. Um, just as I do believe that, you know, some women just like, for okay, so for example, for, regarding me, I, I thrive in structured environments. Like I do not like chaos. I do not like uncontrolled environments. Like, so having a man to be like, look, this is what it is. This is what it ain't. Um, that works best for me. Like I couldn't be with a man who is not leading in any way. Like that just would not work for me. Like, I, I, I mean, it just, I know that I would not, um, that wouldn't work for me. Like I, I literally prosper when I'm in just controlled environments, meaning, uh, I'm not controlled environments, but structured environments, meaning, you know, um, there's a system in place of some sort, you know what I mean? Um, right. that, that's what works for me. So like, I couldn't be with a man who just is not leading and, you know, everything is being left to chance and that, that wouldn't work for me. Yeah, that, that's really true. That's really true. I just thought it was real interesting. Um, and a lot of men, I noticed that a lot of men kind of get mad that women prefer these types. And, you know, one, and I, you know, I asked men, okay, why do you think a woman would prefer a thug, a thug over you, over a hardworking man, a man who's got his shit together? Why would you actually think right. a woman would prefer um, somebody that's crazy and wild and whatever over you? And what do you think about that? Um, wait, okay. So before I answer, let me ask a question. I'm sorry. I just need some clarity. So do you think that the men that are saying this lack, like have no masculinity at all, or they're lacking in masculinity, or maybe their masculinity just isn't displayed outwardly as much as it is with some of these um, other men? <laughs> I, I think um, all men have a, a degree of masculinity, just like all women have a degree of femininity, right? Mm -hmm. But maybe it's not expressed in the same way um, right. that another type of man will display his. And, you know, it's kind of like a, a, like I've heard nerds uh, kind of say, okay, well, women prefer these type of men. That's all they want. That's all they want. And then, you know, I went to college. And so when I was in college, I noticed that women pr actually preferred guys who were uh, really well educated, had some status to them, was kind of like a manly man. I noticed that those guys seem to have gotten all the, you know, all the butt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, you know, it just kind of makes me think, like, do women really prefer this? Or are these guys just tripping, you know? Well, um, I, from in my experience, I think that um, the most of the women that I know do prefer a man who is outwardly masculine. Um, I think that they prefer a man who's not afraid to get his hands dirty. Like they prefer a man that if I get a flat tire, you can change it that, you know, we're not going to be stranded somewhere. But I think that that's a part of the culture, too. I think that, you know, we've been kind of conditioned, not conditioned, but like it's been passed down that you get a man that you can depend on, a man that is not going to be afraid to um, defend you, you know what I mean, versus um, the agenda being pushed that we need to f find a man that can financially provide for us because most black women are taught that you should be able to be in a position to where you could take care of yourself because you can't depend on a man financially. However, a man should be able to, um, you know, per to, should be able to protect you and should be able to, you know, do these things that are, are, are overt, but we're not, um, they, there's not enough focus on, you know, finding a man that can provide for you financially or finding a man that can do both. Like, you know, why can't we have it? both ways you know it shouldn't have to be an either or situation but i think that from my experience most of the women i know they um you you, you know you, they prefer men that 
appear to be masculine outwardly. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Okay. Okay. Well, do you want to open up the panel and um Yeah, we can open it up. Absolutely. Okay. And you know, to me, I think that like the topic um a lot of what I see is, like you said, most, of, I don't, you know, most men save for maybe men that are not straight um, have, you know, masculinity. And even those men have some masculinity. But um, so I think that really and truly there are varying degrees or maybe it's expressed in different ways. Um, mm -hmm. So and I, but I think that essentially what we're talking about is like, um you know, men who display their masculinity outwardly versus those who um, maybe don't. And um, I think that that's, you know, what we're talking about. But I also do believe, too, and I've said this before, uh, that um, there's a such thing as pseudo masculinity. And I think that a lot of black women have a hard time identifying true masculinity um, you know, we think that masculinity is that image of the thug, you know, like, you know, you got to be walking with swag and you know what I mean? Like you got to be wild and, you know, just uh, crazy, you know? So I think that a lot of women don't really know how to identify um, masculinity.